forefront for my voice. I am a Seahawks fan, and if any of you guys followed the game on Sunday, you realize why my voice is, uh, is suffering. Um, welcome to Mobile Marketing Secrets Revealed. We have an amazing panel of some of the leading experts in, uh, in the mobile performance industry. Um, so I want to start off with a couple of quick introductions. At the end of the table here, we have Brian Fox, uh, CEO and founder of Ad Action Interactive. Um, Brian has been in the online advertising industry for 15 years, um, based in Denver, Colorado. His uh, performance network supports over 180 different countries with over 2,000 publishers. Um, next up, we have Benjamin Pomerantz. He's the founder of Pocket Media. He is based in New York, but his company also operates out of Singapore and the Netherlands. Um, Benjamin has been in uh, mobile advertising for six years now, and they spoke, they focus as a performance agency doing buys across social display among many other channels that he'll be telling us about. Uh, we also have Konstantin Diterle, and uh, he um, represents Hipfox. He runs the San Francisco office. Uh, Hipfox is a mobile gaming performance network that is based out of Berlin, but has offices across the world. And we also have Shirley Lin, who heads up business development for Yamovi. Yeah, um, Shirley is a serial entrepreneur who has gravitated to the mobile industry, um, helping startups and enterprises scale their businesses. So we really do have a good insight into what the secrets behind mobile is. Um, mobile has been absolutely exploding over the last two years as uh, more people are moving onto um, their phones and uh, tablets to do their internet searching, purchasing, and also game playing. So, um, to lead things off, I figured it would be best to ask why you guys started the mobile. Why is this your focus, and why is your business 100% dedicated to this vertical? Sure, I can start. So, um, and thank you for the introduction. Yeah, personally, so starting in 2000 in online marketing was very much a, an early boom, and even prior to the dot com fallout, uh, I did so many different things in, in lead generation and e commerce, um, sweepstakes, and and it was always for the last, let's say, four years for our core company, uh, it was always the year of mobile. Um, we heard that every year, but then we constantly were very lucrative in e-commerce and web-based uh, initiatives that we could never reach, you know, get in front of mobile, if you will. So I had the opportunity um, to start a new initiative about two years ago, and without a doubt, I knew I had to get in mobile, and then exclusively into mobile apps. Um, and I think for me, it's, it's been that kind of fire or empowerment to be really a part of something new and to help kind of write the script instead of read it. Um, and, and that's kind of how, why we started to get into mobile and, and why we're doing it today. Constantine, you have an interesting background on how you um, peeked into mobile too. Yes, yeah, so I've been doing um, games advertising for almost five years now. So we, we obviously focus on mobile games um, with AppLift, um, but I've been doing browser games and also client games with Google before. And also they're basically looking at, at budgets coming from clients, looking at, at new clients being onboarded, um, especially for the, for the German game scene, um, seeing that there's more and more gaming companies um, on, on mobile games coming up with budgets, the budget's shifting to mobile, um, you know, social coming up, um, so basically seeing that switch already at Google, um, that mobile gaming is going to get big, and then uh, making the switch over to AppLift, which is only focused on mobile games, and having seen um, the tremendous growth um, you know, over the last um, two and a half years, it's been quite exceptional. And Shirley, what about Yamobi? Um, yeah, mobile started off um, pretty much mobile first and mobile only and back in the early to, uh, 2010. Um, even though we are based in China, but our traffic is all over the world except China. However, we do see the curve of mobile taking off, especially mobile advertising. And it's fueled by the e-commerce and games in China and also fueled by the tremendous growth and sales of the smartphone. That creates a lot of demand and people spend a whole lot more time on mobile. So our strategy helps us scale to where we are today and then we do see a lot of advertisers and our partners grow with us and spending more and more, especially in China, the branding is becoming a, 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 almost a must to, to do. So besides the uh, business to business, but well, now it's a business to com consumer. We see tremendous curve of growth. In pocket media, obviously getting ads in people's pockets and, and yeah. being able to do performance advertising around that. So yeah, my background started online. Um, 
And, and what I saw with the, the last company I worked with is that everything was shifting so fast to mobile and that the, the conversion rates, um, the, the, the user behavior was, was uh, so different that when I started Pocket Media that we said, okay, we're going to do a mobile focus only, uh, especially on the apps. Um, so that made our choice uh, quite easy where we knew that that's where the biggest investments were going, where um, the industry is, is moving, and uh, I believe we made the right choice. Perfect. So along those lines, you, you say specifically along the apps, um, it's kind of a new medium that we can reach people at, right? Um, how is that different from running, all of you guys had experience doing online, non-mobile beforehand. How has that really changed now that you have this app ecosystem that you can actually deliver ads and engage audiences in? So when, when we're talking about mobile, there, there are obviously a lot of, of differences. Um, I talked about apps. Um, well, we, we shouldn't forget the, the, the big difference on mobile between uh, mobile web campaigns and, and, and mobile apps. Um, mobile uh, difference, the, the, the screen size, how you reach the users, um, how you can target users. It's um, uh, way more advanced than, than online. Um, you can reach users literally in, in their pockets. Um, you know where they are. You can track them. Um, I think those are, are, are uh, compared to, to online, uh, our biggest advantages and, and differences that we see. Um, yeah, well, I also would like to say in terms of um, yeah, the tracking, tracking side of things, the difference between running, again, um, with the example of, of, of games and mobile games, is that these guys are, I mean, the clients are very, very data-driven. So um, also the development on mobile, how mobile has changed in terms of being able to track um, optimize and, and run campaigns. You know, and being able to, to optimize in sub-ID level, being able to run on all of those. You know, all of those, those metrics. Looking at ISPs, looking at IP, looking at location, looking at device, looking at all of these um, OSs. All of this gives us tremendous, um, 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 yeah, a chance to obviously target and optimize the campaigns based on which user is actually the best one for which setting and for which app. And um, this is very good. I mean, it was already there for browsers and browser gaming and, and for online campaigns, but on mobile, much, much more. So when you're actually going out there and working with your publishers and focusing on, on mobile, is it an education curve you have to bring them through? Are they taking some of the same habits that they had and some of the same practices in the desktop space and applying them to mobile? Um, what's that learning curve like? Because we are supposed to be revealing the secrets about mobile sure, advertiser. Sure. I mean, well, I guess with speaking of secrets um, in regards to mobile apps, um, I think what's very interesting um, as a mobile app marketer is the discovery of apps is very unique and different than how we discover websites or how we think about the web. You know, fundamentally, we start a lot of our engagement through a search engine like a Google um, or a Yahoo or old schoolers who go to AOL, um, which some of the, Nate, Ivy, I know you go to AOL. Um, but think about when we discover apps, they're very different, right? It's usually either very uh, words, uh, word for friends, um, or the app stores themselves. So as we think about marketing, we have to kind of rethink how we market uh, to those consumers in that same way. So there's a lot that we do um, to engage um, a better experience through the collateral of the apps, uh, whether it be kind of the screenshots, uh, the reviews that an app get, um, the positioning of an app, um, kind of um, how we interact with apps as, as consumers. And when we think about publishers and how we reach out to publishers, you know, fundamentally, as a publisher, you think about monetization. And so what are we doing to drive a higher level of monetization for our publishers? And that's usually, in most cases, with the way of, um, of creative. What's very unique in mobile app marketing, as we think about landing pages, that the landing pages are all the same. Um, going back to the web, you've got all type of landing pages with different privacy policies, terms and conditions, opt-ins, and it's very fragmented. But in mobile app marketing, the landing pages are always from a trusted source, either Google or Apple, and the user gets very, very aware on what to do next. Click here, install, right? So the conversion rates are very efficient. So it's really all about um, good creative uh, and high converting kind of screenshots and, and collateral. Um. 
for us, I think it, um, because the volume we're doing today, and we're doing like 150 billion impression a month, and about more than half a million converging every day. I think it's for the publishers to us. We really, really need to work with them to optimize. And many of you guys are sitting here, affiliates, affiliate networks, is to be able to really monitor in the sort of real time to let you know whether its camping is running successfully and where do we need to change. Maybe we retarget geographic uh, um, location or the, the, the demographics. So these are the kind of things that we need to monitor and constantly get clients to say, hey, we want to increase your volume, give us more campaign. Well, you need to also let us know what is your strength. So it needs to have that dialogue that, uh, to, to engage with your publishers to really monetize any campaigns. Great. So all of you guys represent networks or agencies that have publishers across the world. What is it about internationalizing some of these programs? Is it, are publishers able to uh, deliver the same campaign in all these different regions, or are you finding more specific publishers and affiliates in particular countries to drive certain, certain products? I mean, from a, from a gaming perspective, again, um, and, and looking at, at how this is um, effective, so there's a lot of, I mean, it's still very fragmented. So for example, I mean, the Western world, it's let's say Europe and, um, and um, and the US um, is, is very similar. So I mean, obviously, English speaking um, is, is a must. Um, Asia is, is still very, very difficult um, in order to make campaigns there. It's usually very, I mean, it's a lot, a lot more fragmented, first of all, because of, there's a lot of different languages, and it's, it's very hard to get in, 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 those, in those markets. Um, I mean, it's usually campaigns that are run in, in Asia will only stick and stay in Asia and, and vice versa. Um, I mean, there's a couple of, of advertisers that do well over there as well, but it's, it's a different approach. Um, what you see, for example, um, in, in Asia is that um, something like branding is very, very important. Um, you know, you've got to be on, on the billboard of the Seoul subway train, otherwise, you know, you probably won't get um, any, any big, any big um, marketing recognition or any big, any big, any big um, install rates coming in. So this is something about building a, a trusted brand um, in those countries. I mean, we see it in the, in the Western world as well, um, but it's... it's, it's more important and more, um, you, you, you see it more in, in Asia as well. And um, then when it comes to the, to the games itself um, or to the apps themselves, I mean, there's, there's some publishers that do run global campaigns. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's efficient, but um, you need to be, very, to be very localized as well because, I mean, these different markets, they, they have different, um, you know, expectations towards, towards um, an app, towards how even the marketing uh, has been done. Sometimes it's just the hair color, maybe it drives more conversions. You really have to look at all the data points um, you know, in, 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 the, in the marketing campaign to really see how is this, this, this country deferring, you know, is it again, is it an ISP that works better maybe in this, in this particular country is, um, you know, OS also fragmentations, for example, in Korea, um, you know, Android is much bigger than, than, than in, 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 the, in the rest of the world. Uh, for example, in, in Switzerland, I think the iPhone penetration is 90%. So you basically have to look at all these different factors and then build up a campaign in order to, to deliver and on, then optimize on the go as well. That's a great point. If I can throw in a few more, because we, you know, we're ba based in China, but we work a lot with direct with like e-commerce uh, clients, a huge one, and it's be also because fueled by uh, Alibaba's um, IPO. So, and 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 Constantin also brought a good point is that the the Asian kind of, and then they all realize they need to do the branding so that they can reach to the. Uh, customer B2C in the Western world. So how their creatives are going to be uh, done and how do they target and that's all. For example, like we deal with a, a wedding gown manufacturer, uh, shoe manufacturer, electronics, and all these, they want a lot of user growth, a lot of user acquisitions, but we really need to work with many of you to say, okay, how do we optimize, and do they really understand the culture when they do the creative? So I think that there is a whole lot more coming, and but I see the huge trend. We need to be able to track really well to have that kind of dialogue, understanding the, 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 the cultural difference, just like the games and everything else, to be able to do this kind of brand e-commerce to the consumers outside China. What is also uh, very interesting uh, what you see with, with the publishers uh, on, on mobile is that the publisher is also the advertiser, um, especially if you look at apps. Um, you see that less on, online, but basically uh, a developer builds an app, wants to get it promoted, and after that he wants to make money in his app, so he wants to have it monetized. So you're also 
dealing with with the same company um, that you're helping in in both ways first you're basically taking their marketing budget and then you're making money for them by promoting other apps again in their app um, by monetizing their traffic yeah I think that's one really interesting thing about <clears throat> mobile is every advertiser or most advertisers are also publishers yeah. and, and getting that brand recognition going between um, different campaigns and making sure that there's relevancy there actually makes it relatively easy to do behavioral targeting, right? It's and a I mean, double rule. It's yeah. for us yeah. also. Yeah. Yeah, we dish out easy. the traffic, but we receive the cameo. We are the advertisers. Yeah, absolutely. So when you talk about traffic sources, um, we, didn't really, we haven't really got into your publisher base and what channels you guys actually go to. Brian, you want to talk a little bit about the, the breadth of publishers that you have and what's sure. working and maybe different sure. regions? We talk about our publishers and then um, as an app developer, if I'm in your shoes, where do I spend marketing budgets? Uh, first and foremost, I'm spending it on Facebook. Um, to date, they're showing kind of the highest return on ad spend, though it's more expensive than other channels. It's gonna give you contextually really strong yields. Um, from there, I'm looking at kind of core SDK and display networks like we may represent or access. Um, and also looking at video. We found that uh, those three channels uh, collectively are driving both uh, higher return on ad spend um, and, and volume. You know, collectively, that's what we're looking for: is that is to bid a dollar and get a dollar ten back in return. Um, also, you know, as you think about the creative assets that go along with it, kind of being efficient with your time. So, building great assets, landing pages, if you will, for your apps, um, can then parlay into your creative. Uh, right now, video is available on the Android store, and now I think um, on the new operating system for iPhone, it's also uh, an available ad unit. So that's an efficient way that I've seen domestically um, to be you know, right out of the gate. Can I build a 15 you know, piece creative set along with an amazing app and some smart contextual ads on Facebook and display along with a little video to get the best return on ad spend? We, um, besides also on, on social and on display, we, uh, we also focus uh, quite a bit on search. Um, Google, Bing, Yahoo, uh, Baidu in China, Yandex in Russia. Um, the volumes are, are a little bit less on, on mobile, even though it's, it's kind of growing fast. What you see is, is, is the engagement from users, but also the, the, the return and, uh, of users is, is I would say comparable with, with social. Um, the, the volumes are a little bit lower, but with, with search, you know, you, you, you're not advertising with creatives or, or with a video, or you really need to be creative on, on uh, the ad texts, and the, the, the keywords, uh, to position yourself uh, in a better way. But it's also the experience that, that you can deliver uh, through Google or Bing on, on mobile, uh, where they developed a special marketplace just for, for apps. That is, uh, for developers, uh, a very interesting uh, way of, of starting and also testing the market, um, knowing directly how the users, uh, the users that they get, are directly interested. We were actually talking a little bit about how you've been working in buying uh, hash tags on Twitter as well, which is kind of an interesting way to bring and how that actually ties into some TV campaigns. Want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, definitely. So, so Twitter um, is is uh, a very nice new social um, uh, source. And what you can do is every television show these days has uh, the hashtag um, in in screen. So what you do on mobile is you buy those hashtags and you know when the when the television shows are, are screening. So at that point you start advertising. So people are uh, twittering on the hashtags. And then your advertisement on mobile constantly comes in because um, the, the nice thing of that is that you get a really nice engagement between the user that's interested in a television show. Um, example, the Kim Kardashian app. We were advertising that. The Kim Kardashian show, um, I'm not watching it really, but... Um, <laughs> sure, um, sure. <clears throat> what we see, what we saw on, on Twitter happening the moment that the show was on and we were buying those hashtag keywords, 
that was amazing. Like the downloads went up so fast, and that's that's very cool that you can interact with users that are you know sitting at home watching TV, twittering, and that you're basically sending them the, 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 the right the right promotion. I think it's interesting that connection that we're drawing between all these old mediums that we have with TV and everything, and mobile is just right in front of somebody. They always have it in their hand. And it's just an amazing way to like reach out at a personal level, whether it's a hashtag that you're bidding on or, or anything along those lines. Um, yeah, absolutely. What's also, I think, what's important to, to, to look at is, I mean, of course, we're still talking about mobile advertising, but it's a lot of stuff is actually happening off the screen, or like again, talking about a bit of offline, um, offline and branding approaches. But again, it's super important to obviously because the, the mobile device is with us all the time. Obviously, to draw that bridge and being able to to look at these different, um, you know, also older media's to sort of do the transition over to to mobile. Um, looking at you know social influencers who who might be doing something. You know, we we work with YouTube celebrities that can also promote um, some 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 games, for example, and you know and, and review them, etc. So it's it's looking at obviously the mobile device with all the creatives and and the and the video. Obviously, video is super important. Um, but then also seeing how can maybe other um, other channels help, um, which are not maybe on this on this little device. Maybe it's wearables coming up in the future. I don't know. But I mean, looking at all these different channels and then trying to find and being able to attribute it to the right marketing spend. Yeah, and we're seeing some some uh, really optimization. We're a big uh, Facebook media buy. And from China and what we do is just uh, everybody in his brother knows how to buy uh, media on Facebook very effective everybody knows about that but we are able to create volume in that we can almost real-time create many many different versions creators you know slight changes of your create uh, of your ads and then we can do the testing to see which ones work the best on Facebook and then because of the volume we created, there's sort of the bulk rate to optimize. You can do it, but you don't get the kind of uh, bulk rate. The other one that we see tremendous growth and uh, promising is a native ads. Uh, native ads are sort of like embedded in your uh, mobile skin, sort of like launcher, and then it's almost so natural. That's why it's called native ads. We are seeing very high conversion of native ads because the ads are becoming part. If, let's say if you're looking at the weather app, and then we're you know bringing ads of umbrella or snow, ski gear kind of thing. It became so natural, and because of the the effect, the facts of the, the targeting and the, the numbers that we get, we can do a much better targeting to be something that you be interested in and therefore you feel so natural about. So native ads, is that just in app or is that also mobile web? No, it's, it's, it's in your browser. It's not in app. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it, works, it works both ways. I mean, yeah, there's yeah. ways of obviously having native ads in, in an app. I mean, Facebook right. is the best example obviously right. to, to have um, great native ads. I mean, there's there's multiple ways of doing it. I think uh, if you have a mix of both um, on, on browser and, and on, the, on, on desktop, I mean, Within, within the browser on mobile um, and, and in-app, I mean, that's the most effective way to look at it. Yeah, yeah, I was referring to the on the mobile, not the in-app. Yeah. For our product. So, I mean, in-app is, we talked a little bit about, about that earlier, but speaking to affiliates, how can they build content and build their own apps to really help monetize these advertisers? Sure, if you, if you think about, um, as a buyer of mobile media mm -hmm. for our app developers, um, the reach of in-app advertising is much more finite than that of mobile web uh, just because of the how long the app stores have been available right so um, as a publisher there's definitely a lot of opportunity and there's demand um, that's really open to mobile web publishers so that that's that's a good thing um, majority of that uh, traffic that we buy is heavily on the Android side, being that Android store is kind of more of an open store um, that allows for a, a bigger platform uh, of display through different device units um, uh, and different opportunities uh, as a buyer. If you if you do think about what we're looking for uh, is as a buyer, it's going to be some type of um, engaged user. So we're looking for publishers. Um, that you probably have some contextual relevance uh, or driving some value to the user, whether it be content-based, uh, gameplay, uh, you know, news, rewards, something there uh, that's kind of has some affinity to the apps uh, that we're going to be representing, which in most cases will be games, you know, social media, fashion, coupon. So if I'm a publisher, I'm trying to probably create content around similar things in that regard. 
what, what, what's interesting to to uh, getting your stories with what we see with apps, especially the, the developers. Um, they know what they're looking for, at least the, the larger game advertisers. Um, and especially with, with the tracking platforms these days, um, uh, Hass offers, MAT, um, we, can, we can measure so much more. Uh, it's not a, only about the install. Uh, it's, it's all about you know, how, how the users react. Well, what's the, the, the first event could be um, the first day, do they even open the app? Uh, do they register the app? Uh, what's the first purchase? What's the second purchase? And all of that, you're, you're filtering in and, and seeing if, if the media that you're buying, if that's social, search, um, in-app, and then uh, the different categories of apps that you're buying the, the, the ads in, if, it, if it is, it's, it's a match, yes or no. So we get the information much faster and the feedback from the advertisers that we can filter back to the publishers to optimize towards quality. I think that that's one thing that I've seen is a much larger movement towards the customer journey after the install. Um, I think the last two years, a lot of app developers, they were really focusing on driving new acquisition. And so that meant get the app installed and that was the end. And that's how they were paying their publishers out. I think that we're seeing a shift in, in, the, in the payout model to some action down the road. So not only did I, did I drive an install, but did I drive an in-app purchase? Did I drive an upgrade or anything like that? Do you guys have any good examples of how that's changed your business over the last year? Yeah, we sort of call it an adjusted CPI model, basically. So looking at yeah, the, the, the quality of, of each install, looking at how, what kind of yield and what kind of quality is that install driving. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it, you, should, it's care you should be careful about it as well, because if you go too granular and you spend, you know, you, you split it up into 15 different targeting options and then in 15 different countries and, and have like a, a ton of data, I mean, it's good, but I mean, it's also called optimizing yourself to death, where sometimes you just go for this one little install and also that's not very interesting. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you have to sort of um, have an approach which works both ways, but I think what, what we've seen which works very well is um, having like two or three tiers, you know, these publishers are maybe below the quality, but at least we don't shut them off because they're very bad quality. But I mean, we lower the, the payout for those guys. Um, we have uh, the normal, the normal tier, which focuses on on the let's say the standard quality, and then we have a high payout tier, um, which um, you know where we pay out more for the high quality users. And um, I think this is something where advertisers are, are very willing to come our way and also do this do these kind of optimizations, and it's driving value to them anyway. So they're they're interested, of course, to get higher quality users. But it's also a game of of getting a lot of volume as well. So it's it's always between those those two lines. And that's what? a great point. Upstart. Yeah. I I want to, you know, basically discuss that, how you guys see that also, like, what we're seeing is that over the, especially this year, what we see a lot of movement is that we're, we're managing the, the expectations a little bit more um, with, with the developers. Um, two years ago, it was all about volume installs. Uh, right now, they're, they're looking more at quality, but it's also, you know, they, they expect so much, right? And especially, you know, hearing that you guys, uh, uh, are working with with the different tiers is that that's what it's all about you know maybe the quality is less but it still adds and, and contributes you know, um, so it's it's especially managing the expectations of the advertisers and working close with them and I think this is, that's uh, both of you brought a good point is just uh, there, there are a lot of affiliates out there and for us to be sort of like a middle tier middleman kind of model business model we really need to manage the publishers quality and create a different tiers and I have to say we're a big fan of pass offer too <laughs> that, that you know in the bigger basically our two companies grow about the same time and then uh, manage the reliability and the fraud detection as you are know there's a lot of fraud on that so that helps us tremendously uh, to be able to, to, to manage that. But of course, internally, you're doing a, a whole lot more tracking and, and, um, and, and creating the tiers of your publishers. Um, I work with a, a partner, and there, this is a huge brand of uh, music app on mobile. For example, you talk about regions, and they don't do in-app purchase. So they're just, you know, uh, you, you buy it, okay, paid uh, version, and it's not cheap about ten dollars or something and they just want to target they say surely uh, can you find me Scandinavia 
English speaking because they are English speaking. Scandinavian uh, social economic status is higher, so it would they, they 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 target that kind of region. So we have to kind of work and find out a quality uh, um, publishers to 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 focus on that region because it's a high payout. A payout is really high because of their you know a paid version of that. So you know it, it comes with very different. Uh, tiers of the advertisers as well. Uh, yeah, I think that was one thing that mobile app developers on the advertiser side, they were all about getting the install and that was relatively an easy conversion point because a lot of these apps were free and offered in-app purchases and I think with the evolution of a lot of the, um, the analytic technology and the tracking technology, advertisers are really starting to consume more of the like where are my quality users coming from, right? Um, so how does that relate back to how your publishers can optimize? I mean, are you guys posting that data back to them if the advertisers are giving it to you? Yeah, I mean, I mean, as a as a mobile secret too, right? As we reveal all of these secrets, <laughs> um, I think that's a huge takeaway for the industry over the last two years in attribution and analytics. Is when you see so much um, economic velocity from clients spin so quickly with no visibility two years ago, just wanting installs, and now getting back to you and saying, you know what, the economics work, right? That's a, that's a huge win for the industry. That shows stability, that shows growth. And so then as a publisher, you know, who's working on the web, you can now kind of shift to mobile knowing that there's stability there. It's gonna be worth my time and effort. Um, what we do now, it's different than two years ago, is when we get a $100,000 budget over two weeks, we now allocate it evenly across multiple publishers uh, for that first four or five days, and then reallocate it on those publishers that are giving us highest LTVs. Whether that be through multiple CPIs, you know, paying a dollar versus three dollars, or just pushing more and more spend to the higher uh, valued publishers. So as, as everyone is not only now participating in the value piece, of this, um, we're reinvesting in what is valuable, and so that to me is very strong for us as an agency, as the buyer and the seller. So that's all very good news. Yeah, what's also very important um, from from our perspective in, in that case is that you also allocate your inventory more in intelligently. So basically, maybe this one publisher is running, you know, high, very high quality on a on a puzzle game, and then a super low quality on a strategy game. But then we have another publisher, which is you know the exact the, the, the exact opposite, and so we can actually allocate the budgets for the puzzle game directly to this one publisher that we know has good quality for puzzle games, and therefore don't lose time you know having to test. So basically, the way and, and going forward, you learn on the way, and you basically also help in that case um, the advertisers and also the publishers because you don't have to shut the campaigns down. You know, every, everybody works more efficiently, and you optimize your inventory in a much better way. So this is um, super helpful for us as well. So you guys talk a little bit about advertiser budgets. And I think that for people that are trying to get into this, this mobile scene, I think that they want to know what, it, what is the opportunity here? I mean, we, we see a lot of statistics coming out about how mobile advertising is growing and doubling every single year. But I mean, clearly there is opportunity because you guys all chose to take this mobile path. But really, what, what do these budgets look like coming from these app developers? Oh, I, I can talk. I'm not re I can't review any names, for example. <laughs> Maybe not directly, but... Uh... Obviously, so you don't take that. Um, for example, the e-commerce from China, they all recognize uh, that the branding is important. And we talk about analytics, because in the past two years, and I saw this trend of mobile advertising, two years, there was no number, and advertisers said, okay, I'll spend a few thousand dollars, just because my buddy playing golf with me spent a few thousand dollars. But all of a sudden, because in the past two years, analytics, all these programming analytics start to be available. And all of a sudden, advertising becomes so sexy because you can measure your ROIs. So branding and, and the actual um, to consumer. And we're seeing the e-commerce. I mean, we're talking about shoe manufacturer or wedding gown manufacturing in China. They are willing to spend huge amount. I'm talking about huge amount. Okay, uh, just to begin with, it could be tens, tens, uh, you know, a, a, a big portion of millions on that. And once they are there, they spend a whole lot more because they can measure. And everybody, yes, we are using your platform, but everybody and his brother is also doing some kind of measurement. And for the publishers, I know this publisher in Berlin, ten people. They have two programmers doing analytics. 
I mean, it's a publisher, right? You would think, okay, they use everybody. They use all kinds of platforms, but they are doing their own analytics also. So the more you provide the measurement to your advertisers, and it goes both ways, and then the advertisers are more willing to spend because they see the reasonable. But there's also the other side, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, is, of course, everybody wants to win that uh, multi-million dollar budget over. And if you look at the app space, yes, there are a few companies that are doing very well, that ipo got a large investment, but then there's still the largest group of developers, is, is it that mid-level, small uh, developer that wants to launch its game, right? And he needs to compete with, with the high paying prizes that, for instance, um, uh, say, uh, what do we know, Supercell, King, um, Big Fish, SGN, those are the big names. <laughs> but so what do you do with those small, smaller guys? And, and they don't have the, 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 the um, millions. No, they come to us and they ask, okay, we'd love to advertise and to do some marketing, but our budget is 5K, not for one week, but for the coming half year. Where we need to allocate like the, the, the best traffic for them you know, eventually what we see is it's such a large group of different advertisers that we're dealing with uh, that all want to get their app out there that we're, you know, also taking these small budgets in um, because eventually we need also them and we also need them to grow and to show them uh, what is possible um, on mobile. So for Ad Action, we're a year and a half old, uh, bootstrapped the company, uh, along with my experience, so we have 13 employees now, and I wear designer jeans. So, <laughs> so those are all things on the up. <laughs> <laughs> he has nice jeans on too, if you can't tell. Um, so we talked a little bit about operating systems, we've talked about traffic sources, um, we've talked about geolocations and budgets. Uh, again, for someone that might be coming new, in, in, new into the space, how do they make the best decisions? And I think the best way to position that is what mistakes did you guys make first and foremost that they can then learn from and not do again? Okay, where to start? Um, <laughs> over the last Moment uh, of three, four years being in, um, um, really focused on mobile, uh, we made, I think, every mistake possible. Um, but that's also the only way to learn. Uh, and and what, what we're seeing, uh, so for instance, a mistake, a common mistake is that um, we were buying um, a lot of online traffic in the past. But we were measuring that that online traffic was open on mobiles. So we were uh, putting in mobile products uh, from, from our ad server and think, okay, they'll probably convert. Doesn't work. Um, but we spent a lot of money on that. Also, the, the, the common mistakes is, is that how the user uh, engages. Um, compared to, to online, the, um, uh, the measurement models, um, what we see, uh, we basically treated every user also as an online user comparing to, to, to mobile. But right now, the, the mobile users are completely um, yeah, different compared to, to the online users in, in, in terms of behavior. I'm not sure how you guys see that, uh, the mistakes you make. Yeah, we sort of, I mean, it's obviously you make a lot of mistakes on, on the way. I think we underestimated, I mean, also specifically me, we underestimated two, two big factors. Um, so one is the transparency issue. Um, I think going forward, um, you have to be a lot more transparent towards the advertisers in order to get higher budget also because they want to know that their brand is secure. They want to know that you know the, the way it's been advertised is obviously not not with fraud. And um, so this transparency in the beginning was something where I mean yeah we didn't really you know share, share publisher IDs or even sub publisher IDs. This is something that we're doing a lot more now because it's important to obviously being able first of all to optimize to then be begin to making smart decisions on on in um, inventory um, allocation. So this helps us as well and helps us grow with the client. So this is super important and something that we really didn't focus on in the beginning. And the second one is video. I'm also underestimating the power of, of video ads on mobile. Um, I mean, we, we, we have an SDK that we brought up, but actually we didn't include video on it. Um, I mean, we, we're backtracking that now, which is good. I and mean, we have a lot more tech development, and so that's, that's good to see. But um, yeah, the way that mobile, and mobile video and video in general has been exploding and is still going to explode, 
I think a recent report says it's going to quadruple in, I think, in, in spending until 2018 um, is just um, insane. So yeah, um, this was a sort of a mistake where we didn't see video picking up that much speed um, in that short amount of time. You know, for us, the biggest mistake we made was to think that we could do uh, web and mobile at the same time. So if you're coming to this um, panel thinking, you know, I've got this great web business, how do I now engage mobile into it? That was our biggest mistake. I would either suggest creating a tiger team that's siloed away and they get to live and breathe mobile or be a mobile first company. Uh, in that same regard, when I'm buying media, I think uh, we saw uh, a lot of mistakes in thinking that web mobile companies could fulfill our needs for that same, that same issue. Just because they put a couple mobile you know, icons on their website doesn't mean that they're mobile ready. So when I'm buying media, I'm now only buying from mobile only uh, entities. For well, us, uh, growing to the scale and trying to be an international company, I have all these problems that we probably face. But for us, the biggest challenge that we are trying to improve is the communication. So I think in a way, it's to manage the expectations from the publishers. They are very, very, I'm sure many of you, uh, sophisticated uh, publishers. And I have one that come to our booth and that shows you know, a deck of uh, folders with past three months pay out and dr, 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 and I'm like, shit. <laughs> we, we haven't done any of this as you know, we are their advertisers. So I think there's a starving for such kind of information and therefore this kind of, again, dialogue, the more you engage, the more you monitor, you know, filter out the bad ones, keep the good ones, sometimes it's a gray area that you keep. And I think it's a, a, a way to achieve that, that big next milestone because uh, we obviously need to do a whole lot better in terms of being a China company based there, uh, a whole lot better job uh, communicating with, with our publishers. So that's, that's a huge challenge for us, but we are getting there. <laughs> Constantine, I'm going to leave you out of this one <clears throat> because you focus on gaming, but what is it working with brand advertisers? They seem to be a little bit later in the mobile revolution. And I think a lot of the gaming companies that are like, we're mobile, this is our product, it's on people's devices, and, and that's what I'm going to focus on. But how have you guys approached the non-gaming sector? Yeah, non-gaming clients are, um, aren't as strong analytically you know, um, because so much more of, of what they're doing may also be web focused as well. Um, so we, what we've noticed most is that we're kind of piggybacking what they're doing on in print, TV, and web, um, and just trying to carry a message. Uh, and in some cases, whether it be in-app or mobile website, they're, they're registered, they're, you know, sweepstakes or registrations, um, but there's, there still seems to be a lack of analytics between, you know, is this, online install, driving to you know an offline sale, whatever it might be. Um, but it's also you know a lot of fun to work with. Uh, I've found uh, budgets seem to be larger um, as far as the initial budgets and test budgets. There seems to be a higher threshold of pain. Uh, you know some small game com companies uh, out of Boston can only pay like five thousand dollars you know initial IOs, and so that's you know that really mitigates media companies who need bigger IOs. Um, and have higher threshold of pains. We still love those clients. They're just probably Seahawks fans. Hey, so I'm just hey, kidding. hey, I'm just hey. Kidding. I'm He's a Broncos kidding. fan, and uh, yeah. he might be a little hurt from last year's Super Bowl still. This is two in a row for us, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so what, what we see with um, uh, more on branding, it's, uh, yes, the install is, is important. Uh, the the um, uh, event after is also important, but in, indeed, you know, it's also that branding factor that comes in. Um, the gaming guys are, are very demanding. You know, if uh, the moment users, you, you bring in users and they don't play, they don't do anything, um, it's considered as a bad user. Well, with, with what we see with the, um, uh, the branding apps or uh, utility apps, um, is that, you know, they, they take the, the, the aspect of that you're, you know, out there, that you're giving them an impression share, that you're uh, promoting their app, um, doing good display campaigns on mobile for them um, uh, is also an important factor. We actually started off not with game, probably one of the few, and we started off with a lot of the mobile tools, mobile applications, and a, a lot of these have less so-called cultural barriers. For example, antivirus, right? Whether, you know, 
know, it's all English, just a simple enough translation. So uh, to, to promote that, and they can, you know, have a strong demand for the global user acquisition kind of things. So we're doing really well on that. And for example, sweepstake, mm -hmm. um, prescription, uh, I mean, subscription-based kind of things. So that's actually a strong suit, is actually non-gaming. But again, that we provide a whole lot more data back to them. And we're trying to do that uh, more and more, providing the feedback to our advertisers. Um, and, and when you talk about e-commerce, um, same thing, you know, they want to do branding and they may or may not have a mobile app to promote with, but they just want a landing page to get to the awareness of their product. And you know, being in the past, being a Shenzhen manufacturer, now they want to be a big wedding gong, you know, uh, uh, sellers, resale, uh, retail kind of things. So, so we see a lot of tremendous opportunities in that area. But we are working on the games too. <laughs> actually have something to say about non-gaming and um, so we have a sister company which does a bit of non-gaming so we ventured into this it's quite interesting to see especially the um, the mobile first countries um, launching um, non-gaming so for example India is a very interesting market um, for and actually here not for gaming just for non-gaming because these guys they they don't own a computer they have uh, the mobile first devices is, I mean they just have a device and that's it I mean that's they do everything through their mobile device so this is a huge, a huge market um, to, to push obviously non-gaming and, and you know classifieds, utilities, and dating as well, etc. And same as Latin America. So we see also a huge potential on non-gaming in Latin America, where we have seen some very good numbers. Um, and I think in terms of branding on mobile for the brand guys, maybe also time for um, looking at metrics for you know looking at engagement metrics for for the just for the impression. I mean, you know, looking at this person looked at my banner for five seconds, or this person looked at my interstitial for 10 seconds. Maybe this, val this user has more value, etc. So maybe looking at different metrics and, and tracking metrics of um, just the creative itself. Very good. So is there any other secrets that we have not revealed yet? I'm going to have you guys unveil them, and then we're going to open it up to the crowd for questions um, if we did not touch on anything that you're interested in. So is there anything that we missed on that you feel like you either made mistakes or you've had a lot of success that you're willing to share? Um, not maybe revealing your competitive advantage, but. Sure, you know, um, one secret that hopefully that you leave with as well is just the devils in the details. And as you think about things that you learned and how to market and monetize on the web, rethink those as a mobile. Uh, so a mobile first user, uh, how they're engaging and walking and interacting. Um, and then they're no longer on desktop, so now you're thinking about devices, iPhone, iPad, a series of different Android devices, and now you're thinking about operating systems. Are they on the latest operating system? Uh, do they have an old operating system? Um, do they have access to Wi-Fi? Because an app could be really, really large, and they don't, they're not on Wi-Fi, it could take three days to download, these type of things. So where in the past you used to think about Chrome, Firefox, uh, Macs, PCs, what have you, right? Think about all those things, but put them in a mobile kind of uh, a mobile device or kind of a mobile arena in your head. I've been victim of being forced to upgrade my phone because my favorite apps wouldn't work on it anymore. So they're onto something on the hardware sales side of right, that right, as well. Yeah. Benjamin, anything else you want to add? So in terms of you know mobile, sometimes it, it, it sounds kind of scary, like especially what we're telling, like how demanding the advertisers are and. Um, you have small budgets, big budgets, uh, all the metrics that we're looking at, quality. Um, you know, to, to take the first step to mobile um, sounds really big, but on the other side, you know, there are companies, uh, the four of us, we develop tools also for publishers to, to help you out. You know, we, we don't expect you to completely build everything from scratch. Um, we help developers setting up tracking platforms or else we can't work with them. Um, and we also help them optimize optimize their, their in-app events. Um, that's the same for, for publishers. And that's, I think, you know, the, 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 the don't miss out, that first of all. Second of all, you know, talk to people and, and just ask for help. To say something a bit more cheesy also is, uh, I mean, this is still a very big market which is relationship-driven. Um, so with, uh, with the clients as well as also within the company. I mean, so it's, it's super important to, because you gotta be very fast moving and you gotta, you know, make, make, make 
horrible word, pivot. Pivots like your, your industry and, uh, and your business model sometimes are just, etc. So it's very important to first of all hire the right persons that you want to work with. You know, make sure that you have the guys that are passionate about, about what you do and, and being able to also uh, yeah, adapt to maybe something that three months down the line we're not going to work on anymore. So this is a very important factor for us internally. And then um, obviously also the same thing, bringing the passion towards the, towards the advertisers that you work with and the publishers because this is yeah, it's still a model that I believe is, of course, the data points and everything is very important. But in the end, you also want to work with, with, with the guys that you get along with and making sure that you, know, you get along and, and, and drive a business together because, I mean, if it works out, the publishers obviously and the affiliates, um, they, they, they profit, we profit, and so does the game publisher or like the, the, the advertiser. So this is uh, the most important factor that we see also and we try to sort of follow. For my personal view, and you know, every market when you come to a point, it's totally saturated. What I see is a trend that I mentioned earlier, native ads, we see very con uh, good conversion rate, native ads on the browser, on the skin. Um, the other thing that I see um, that we haven't talked too much, and then Ben talked a little bit about TV, traditional TV ads versus uh, mobile ads. But now that the analytics and the mobile, all of a sudden there's a bridge, for example, Ben was talking about the hashtag, and then you have the interaction with your TV viewer, whether it's on desktop or on your big screen or on mobile, to interact with your mobile uh, actions right in your hand. I think that creates a lot, a lot of opportunities. Um, whether it's gaming, big, uh, hardcore gaming, all of a sudden has a voice because you can uh, ga uh, gauge that kind of um, uh, response. And uh, the other trend is definitely social network. Facebook has proven that they are, you know, probably one of the top in terms of conversion. And then so all the other different culture, different language, social network that we see, for example, Russian network, and we recently signed a you know, big, big partnership with Russian network, and then we, we expect it to be very, very effective media buy for us to go on to a Russian speaking network. So every region you wanted to target to the cultural differences and the language of what it's the most effective media. Thank you guys very much. We have eight minutes left. There's a microphone right back there. Um, who's the first volunteer to ask a question? If not, I'll keep asking them, but yes. Just to repeat the question for the video is, where does mobile search engine optimization come into play? Um, I think it works well for, again, for the big brands out there. If you search, I mean, for example, for a Candy Crush or something like that, then, you know, then, then it does work. I think overall, um, I mean, coming from, from, from Google also and looking at, at how mobile search has been doing, it's, I mean, it's good, but it's, I think it's, it's not there. I mean, it's, it's going well. You can do some good stuff with it, some good things with it, but it's, it's not as high as it is on, on, on desktop. I've seen, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's good to have it, but um, not many people use it. I think also there's a clear distinction between like app store optimization, you know, mobile web optimization. And I think the, the pivot from web to mobile web is, is active and Google and others are very much involved in it. The breakdown, I think, is now we're, even though this is a mobile panel, we're talking heavily about apps because apps are exclusively mobile, right? Where mobile web is, is an extension of web. It's mobile optimized landing pages, it's simpler registrations, those type of things. So it's that apps, ASO piece that's really undefined. You know, Google to date really hasn't pushed you know, that their algorithm into the store. And I think that's where things will dramatically change. And, and that's the tipping point where I think SEO, AKA ASO becomes much more effective. Yeah, I think that that comes down to something that's important when you're choosing which app to actually promote, which advertisers, have they put the thought into the app store optimization? Brian, you're talking earlier about um, making sure that you have the right screenshots of the app and you have uh, engaged users that are actually providing reviews, all that goes into the discoverability of an app, which as a publisher, that's important for you, right? Like you, you want to make sure that you're representing a product that uh, the people are gonna be compelled to click to download or actually purchase. 
Yeah, it's a fascinating time you think about, you, know, you normally would search Google, and I mean, I mean, app discovery is such a hard thing. I mean, I have a four and a half year old daughter, you know, she wants to get in the iPad, and I'm thinking, okay, what's a great app for her, right? And I type in four and a half year old daughter apps, that's a horrible search, but that's what I type, and where do I type it? I type it in the app store on my iPad, and that's the discovery, right? Mm -hmm as bad as that search is. Uh, but, and then I get all the lookalike apps for that search, and that's all being pushed to me through reviews, uh, amount of installs, those type of things. So the fact that, you know, um, Maytel has a great SEO campaign, I'm never even engaging in the web anymore, right? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's kind of interesting because the App Store actually changed the free title to Git, right? There's a lot of people that had an issue with that. Um, I think you guys have talked a little bit about monetizing downstream for the past the install. So maybe you guys can talk more about how that shifted your focus. Um, I think it, it's it's a good thought. Um, it's definitely something to, to to look out for. I think the the same way, sort of indirectly, you would be if you if you're driving high quality users, sort of you would be indirectly rewarded for that as well. Because at some point, if we obviously do our job well and, and, and optimize the campaign, you will get a higher payout at some point. Because obviously the advertiser wants to have those quality users again. So I mean, if if you're driving quality traffic, usually you should be getting higher payouts after a while because that's I mean you know that people will be competing for your traffic, etc. So this is something I mean indirectly. I mean there's 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 ways of of looking at making a ref share model maybe basically on, on, on a near purchase, et cetera, but um, it's, I think it's still gonna be more focused on the install itself rather than, than doing downstream um, analytics. What's interesting too, I think it's the maturity of the performance industry on the web that has moved um, the mobile industry so quickly to CPI. There, rev there never really was a scenario where CPC and CPM were that prevalent because as a buyer on the web, you're like, hey, I used to get you know, some performance guarantee so the industry quickly went to CPI. And I think as an affiliate, you know, you're, to be paid up front and having the client take on some risk as a lead buyer now, instead of like, hey, if someone does do an in-app average, I'm gonna give you 70%, right? You're taking on more risk. So it's been an interesting scenario how quickly we got to performance base. And I feel like it's really just didn't settle in. I think people are gonna kind of dig in their heels a little bit. I don't see it moving a lot. I do see the effective cost per action kind of being more effective, like we're now targeting some downstream action, but we're still paying on a CPI. We actually started with uh, an e-commerce um, app and uh, where we're trying out right now, and especially also because we're doing many of our own media buys, but also with some of our affiliates that are uh, doing their own media buys, to pay on a, on a CPA again. Um, that CPA is, because we're talking about an e-commerce uh, app, so it's, it's purchase and it's, um, uh, the market is kind of weird. It's Saudi Arabia, um, but um, what they what they want to do? It's it's a big clothing brand, and what is purchased in the store is where we get a, a cut of, and that's it, it's it's quite interesting. I'm I'm not saying it's going um, uh, very fast currently uh, in recruiting also uh, good affiliates that are willing to do it, but it's definitely a model coming up. And for us, we are a CPA model, obviously, and then. Like you guys said, I totally agree with that. Um, but the, the better you know your, your users, and then to a lot of the feelings also, the better you know your old users, and obviously it drives a much higher conversion. And for example, like we said, you know, even though it's a free app, but if it's a natural becoming, especially in mo with mobile, with your location, Based LBS, um, you can you can trace where if he's driving to the, to the store today and grocery store, you kind of have to you, you serve a better ads to that person, even though the app is free. So that drives the actual action of the purchasing, for example, because that's exactly what he, every week he has to do. Um, so I think that the CPA model is is becoming. More and more is also because of the competition, right? Because the competition that everybody, you know, advertiser wants to pay only when there's actual actions going on there. Um, and then the brand, you know, you still have the branding advertisers out there, the brands out there. But CPA will be 
uh, hang out better and it will be more accurate if you know your app users better. I've also seen a really big shift in, um, in re-engagement campaigns. So a lot of advertisers say, listen, we've acquired what we see maybe, you know, 80% of our market share, we want to drive people back in there to do those in-app purchases. So I think that's a huge opportunity to, to run some of those campaigns. So with that, it's actually time. Um, I want to thank you guys all, and especially our, panels, our panelists for contributing. Um, and I also want to give you all a reminder, please fill out the, uh, the feedback form um, and turn it into any staff member on your way out. They are going to be pulling five forms randomly to uh, receive a free networking pass for the next uh, affiliate summit. So please give us our feedback. That's the only way we can get better. Thank you guys so much.